I get back to there. Yeah. It's live. Right. It's uh, Friday, the end of a long week. Uh, it's warm here, warm in my room. I just realised I should really put the fan on. And I'm doing a live stream. And this is a bit of a different one because I'm doing it about uh, uh, a board, computer board, even though it's um, on my grunts page and rotten lead. I'm doing something slightly different because I'm kind of testing out a new setup again. Um, I've had sort of two, three weeks of hassles where I haven't been able to stream to uh, YouTube very well, dropping out on Facebook and things like that. But I think now I'm looking at the various settings, it's running okay. And uh, because I like technology, I thought I'd talk about this um, single board computer that I've got in front of me, SBC, and uh, how I use it in my workflow and how I've got it set up. And uh, while I'm doing that, I'll be sort of buzzing around web pages and, uh, and looking at various details on it. So what have I got? Well, I've got a Raspberry Pi 4 here, which is a single board computer. It's newly released. They've had uh, Pi 1s, 2s and 3s for a few years. I've had various versions of them and used them in work and also used them for pleasure, playing games and emulation on them. So there's a lot of things you can do with them. But what I'll do is I'll zoom in to uh, talk about it in my hand up close so you can see what I'm talking about. So here we go. Right, so here we are. This is a Raspberry Pi 4. And I shall try not to turn it off because it can be a bit fragile having a single board computer because what you're obviously, some people are used to if you're not familiar with these things is you're used to um, having a computer case with um, fans and all sorts of gubbins like hard disks and things inside and typically quite a robust thing obviously because it's a, a desktop. Now Raspberry, they, um, they're a British company. They've been producing these for years as I said and they've slowly upgraded them every time and this Raspberry Pi 4 is probably the first time now that they've built them in a way where uh, you can use it as a desktop computer because it's powerful enough. Now I've um, I've never really used one as a desktop because they're slightly risky as a desktop. If you're writing a Word document or similar or whatever application you're using on here uh, to write or use something where you're writing something of importance there is always a risk that they'll just switch off or you'll lose the data. Uh, but there's two sort of reasons why they're better now. One is they're just so much more stable than they used to be. Um, more reliable. Software's less prone to crashing. But also, with so many web-type applications like Google Docs around, you could use one of these and work from it in the knowledge that your Google Docs aren't going to get lost because they're up in the cloud anyway. So let's talk about what it looks like and what's on here. I'm going to use a paintbrush as well, uh, which is a rather unusual way to point at things. Um, but I don't want to point at it with a piece of metal in case I touch it and short something out. So the first thing, it's a Raspberry Pi 4. It's a single board computer. This is the model with four gigs of RAM. That's one of the new features they've got on the latest one. And it has a whole bunch of new features on there. I've got the uh, as I said, the 4 gig version, but they now do them in 1 and 2 gig and the 4 and uh, at different prices. But the lowest entry level price, I think, for the 4 with 1 gig is around the sort of $40 mark. I'll have to confirm that, but they're, they're cheap. That's one thing, that's not one reason that people grab them, is because they're rather low cost. The build and what they've got on them, I have another one actually to hand that I've also been building for my son which I can touch because it's not going to suddenly turn off. But let's go and zoom in on that. So what have you got? You've got two HDMI outputs, so you can have two screens. You can have 4K output as well if you want it, if you've got a 4K screen. I just use them at 1080p, which is 19 something by uh, 1280, is that it? I'll have to check that spec. But I use them at the standard HP, 1080p, uh, 25 frames per second I output. They've now got USB-C as a power. That's a new feature. The old one just had one of the, I've still got an old one to hand here, the, the last Pi 3B generation. 
and you can see it just had one large HDMI output and the power was just one of these standard USB power sockets. So the new ones, this, uh, which I've put in one of these Perspex frame cases, um, there's not many cases out for them yet because they're quite new. It's, it's difficult to get hold of all the sort of full-on cases that they do. Although they do do a, uh, I haven't used it, but Raspberry Pi do do a, um, a standard case for the four, which has the fittings in the right places. Back to what I was talking about then with the paintbrush. So you get two HDMI outputs. You get a USB-C charger now. Uh, so you can use a USB-C cable straight into there or you get a power cable which has USB-C. Um, if you're running USB-C from your computer you might have uh, output ready to charge that. Especially if you're a Mac user you may have a spare port. Um, you've got on the end here you've got USB 3 uh, ports and USB 2 ports. You've got gigabit Ethernet and um, there's an audio output as well. And it just so happens that the audio output will also send out a composite uh, signal if you're using this to fire into an uh, you know an old style TV CRT um, you can get composite out as well and the reason it has that old standard that can come out of the audio is because some people use these for CCTV and various other home automation where you might want to output to an older format screen I use it as part of my streaming for the Ron Led channel uh, to show web pages which I will switch to hi Reese, how you doing I've got one, view, one viewer, excellent, thank you. Oh, well, on YouTube there's a few viewers, but I haven't, uh, no one else has placed a comment. If you want to place a shout something, ask me questions. I might be able to answer them if anybody's got a question on this. Um, so, as I was saying, yeah, you've got USB 3, USB 2. Um, on board also there's Wi-Fi over here and Bluetooth. As I understand it, they're both built into this bit. Um, and this is the main processor here of which I shall share the specs soon. Other things what it has is areas that this looks like an old school serial or parallel type connector and that's because people use these to um, build various different um, maker builds where you might connect it to a um, you know some kind of mechanical robot thing you're building, a light display, whatever you're controlling, you can send signals down these to control devices. But that tends to be, um, that falls into the sort of maker, hobby, coder area of use for these. And um, I use it more for the emulation and just the desktop. But you can get involved in that side of thing and connect all sorts of strange interesting things in fact off the shelf you can get temperature gauges gas meters all sorts of unusual things that will just plug on plus uh, you can get um, little displays that will sit on top of here and give you a kind of heads up display that you can write commands to display information on etc and then underneath as far as the build goes you've just got uh, a place where you put your SD micro SD card so when you're doing the initial setup of these, you want to get one of this kind of larger SD. Uh, I use a 64 gig, but I mean you could get away with a 16 or a 30. Well, that's a 128 gig one there. Um, and yeah, you'd use one of those, slot it out of there, and it will go into there individually, and you can boot from it. Uh, so that's generally the configuration of it. It's uh, I'm running this Pi case on it called um, a pinout.xyz and that's um, a brand new model built for this Raspberry Pi 4. And it's very easy to put together. It was just layers of perspex with these plastic screws. Uh, but I liked it because it's nice and simple. It got me off the ground without having to purchase a whole new uh, full-on case, although I did get the Pi case bundled in to have a look what that looked like. So that's that. And how have I got it configured? Well, if I zoom out on this one here a bit so we can see what's going on. So I'm just running a normal uh, a mouse. This is a Raspberry mouse. Um, very basic looking mouse, but it's a nice little laser mouse. I just happened to be short on a mouse, so I decided to grab one of these. It has a nice wheel in the middle, usual typical use. I'm running that USB-C uh, power into there and I've got HDMI out and it's the mini it's the sort of mini HDMI type of cable on the other end it goes into a full HDMI but on this end it's the mini type and uh, that's running a desktop so if I switch over to the actual desktop this is on 
and I can do that. Plus I can sort of keep this screen up here so you can see the, the device itself. So what's happening right now is I've got the output from here which is HDMI signal and that's going directly into um, a switch I've got which is showing this through my stream. So I, I'll probably do a video at some time about my stream and the full workflow uh, but this one I'll just stick to this device and just talk about it a bit. So yeah, so this is what's called Raspbian. There are various different flavors of Linux that will run on the Raspberry Pis. There are all sorts of unusual quirky versions which you may want to be uh, to have a look at, but I find I like to go for the default one because it tends to be quite well supported. It's called Raspbian. If you go on the uh, Raspberry UK website, you can see all of the downloads on there to grab that. So yeah, Linux, it has, you know, it has a version of Office pre-installed if you've download that version. You've got a browser in, which is called Chromium, which is uh, essentially like Chrome, but a lighter version that runs on Linux. And uh, yeah, so and it's your usual desktop, right click to create folders, and you can use it in that fashion. So it's like a normal desktop computer. So if I browse up, I bring up a browser even. So the first thing, um, because this is a new Raspberry Pi 4, Oh, there's my face on another video. It's a little bit more powerful, so quite a few people are keen on the fact that it will run uh, videos better. So if I hit the, I won't turn the sound on, but if I hit play on, on this video, which is a previous one of me with uh, Rosie the dog in hand, it's doing okay. I can see a little bit of tearing, and I'm not sure if that's because I've not got this configured correctly. Um, but what people tend to do with these raspberries, they might make a media center from it. Um, so yeah, I just see a little bit of tearing when I'm moving around, but that's at 720p that I'm running it. I haven't got anything in higher res, I don't think. Well, I might have on my channel, but you can see that it's pretty good quality. Um, and that's, so that's playing off the, oh, that's a terrible finish, finish image. Let's get off that one. That's a bit more normal. But yeah, that's, that's pretty normal. Um, and then going to another, um, um, browser method, this is, uh, Google Photos, which I use to store images. This is the war game I've written called Grunts, um, which I'm working on version two at the moment. And you can see again, video wise, just little clips here. There's some tearing going on there again, and I'm not sure again, it's, this is brand new, this Raspberry Pi 4. So that tearing could be because screen settings need a tweaking or there needs to be a new patch or something. But it's very quick. Um, despite the tearing. Oh, the other thing is sometimes um, it can be browser on these. So maybe if I switched to um, Firefox or another type of browser on here, it may, may work a bit better. But you can see there browser-wise, if I scroll through these images, um, that's pretty fresh to me in terms of browsing for a, for a very tiny computer, sort of less than $50 computer. Um, I mean, it's the first time I've experienced with this type of desktop because I used to run the Pi 3B, which is the last generation. And if you were scrolling through like that, you had a little pause really while things were loading. So that's fresher feeling, closer to, you know, a work PC desktop kind of speed in terms of how you move through it. So, yeah, that's good. So if I just switch now and just talk a little bit about the spec. So... I can bring up the picture again there. Here it is. Why not zoom in so you can see my board? Oh no, it's not going to get it quite in the frame. There's the beast in view. So yeah, I mean it's got um, quad-core ARM chip, 64-bit, 1.5 gigahertz. So four chips all inside this little um, chip there. Now, um, or oh, the casing there, obviously that gets very hot. I haven't got some people fire up these with thermal cameras to show you quite how hot that gets. But you can run it with a heat sink. You can run it with a fan on there. There's various different adaptions and fans that people have used for cooling these. But you know, generally speaking, obviously, because this is an open case, I wouldn't want to put my finger in there. One, because it would burn on the chip. I'd leave a bit of flesh on the top of that chip. And also because I might short the circuit and it will just, you know, freeze the computer essentially. 
Um, I've gone for the four gig option here, but I think as far as running as a browser desktop, you could get away with the one. I don't know that, I mean, I haven't got any hardcore specking stuff here to tell you the processor power um, and what difference that makes having more RAM to uh, more headroom on the RAM side. So I think there's settings you can do where you can assign some of the RAM to um, caching or and or uh, graphics memory. I don't know any of those settings. I don't change them, but I went for the big memory one because I thought I'd, re I'd only regret it if I bought the smaller one because the difference in price isn't huge. It obviously has uh, wireless and Bluetooth, gigabit, Ethernet out of there. I'm using this obviously uh, wi uh, with Wi-Fi um, and browsing on it. So this is this computer live, this computer right in front of me. Just a reminder again, this is what's happening uh, here. I'm using it to browse this desktop browser. Um, it's got the two micro HDMI, uh, HDMI ports, this 40 pin GPIO header. That's this long thing that looks like an old school serial or, or parallel connector, which you're able to address through your application development to create interesting things and devices hanging off the back of it. It's got four pole stereo um, and these two lane display ports and CSI camera ports. So there's little ports on there that allow you to um, connect other devices like cameras and displays. I'm not 100% sure where they are, so I wouldn't want to say, but it might be this one here, uh, which has got some extra pins on it down on the side here. Um, and it will support OpenGL Graphics 3. And obviously that micro SD card, as I said, it uses the micro SD format, which I shall come on to in a moment, actually, about how you get things started. And it will do power over Ethernet as well, enabled, so you can run the power for this if you've got a PoE, a power over Ethernet hub. Um, you can drive this off the Ethernet, so you don't need separate power then. You don't need this power cable. You can just run it off an Ethernet cable, which is handy, again, if you're sticking it up in a cupboard somewhere and you don't want multiple power. You can just stick it on uh, an Ethernet cable, which has power running through it. And it just mentions the, the uh, it gets hot. A good quality uh, power supply can be used. So I've got a um, a mains power cable, power socket plug, wool wart, as they're called, which I use with it, which you could also, you could run it off a USB-C, off a computer as well. So that's a basic spec of, uh, of the Raspberry Pi 4. And just talking about, as I said before, the um, this SanDisk, um, well, you don't have to have SanDisk. This, is, yeah, I happen to use SanDisk uh, for my uh, uh, micro SD cards. However, um, how do you build it? So the way you do that is two steps really. Um, well, I don't know. If this is the, quite the right order, but essentially you need this Etcher app, which I use. Which, which what you do is basically get your SD card pop it into one of these uh, adapters, or if your computer, PC or Mac has a, a built-in SD card reader, you could use that. But once you mount this with a brand new fle uh, fresh flash disk, again, I've got 64 gig, because they're like $20 or less now. And um, stick that into your PC, your normal PC or desktop uh, or Mac or laptop, and then fire up and download this Etcher app. What you then need is an image for the Raspbian. So if I find the right uh, page for that Raspbian, maybe it's here. No, I shall get the Raspbian details. So this is obviously a big fanfare because the new Raspberry Pi is out. If I have a look at downloads, that should have Raspbian in there. There it is. So as I said before, this this is Raspberry and what I'm running. It's kind of a desktop environment, which is Linux based. It's quite mature now as a as a uh, distribution of, of Linux because they've been evolving it over the different versions of the uh, Raspberry Pi that have been coming out. And uh, as I mentioned before, this Etcher app, all this Etcher app is doing is allowing you to select your image that you've downloaded. So you download a whole image of the app, the, the software, it's totally free. So you can get Raspbian Buster, which includes some recommended software with it, which is 
you know, nearly two gigs is that there? Um, and uh, stick that down onto your computer desktop, and then it will be an image, it will be a zip file. Then you select the zip file, select the drive, which happens to be your, um, your mounted SD card connected into your PC or desktop, and then you hit flash, and it will basically burn the full Raspbian image. Well, it doesn't burn it, does it? It's just writing it to the uh, SD card and makes it completely bootable. Then once you've popped it out of the, uh, the card um, reader and stuck it into the uh, back of the Raspberry, which is uh, underneath, uh, you can see the, the socket there, slap it in there and then turn it on and it will literally boot straight in and ask you your usual settings like you do when you're setting a computer, you know, what region, what language and various other basic details. And as I said, it will go up to 4K resolution on screens now out of these two little adapters. So fantastic um, performance for such a small single board computer. Yeah, and obviously once you've downloaded this uh, Raspberry and Buster and you've got it fired up on here, it will actually auto-update in the future as well. So when you're using this, there are methods to auto-update uh, the screen, uh, the whole software from Linux as well. And... Um, and so when it's booted, you've got a whole sort of combination of things in there. I mean, it comes with the classic old Minecraft loaded on it, um, which I haven't even tried. Or have I tried? Yes, I tried it the other day. Let's see if that loads. It's taking its time. It's not a good sign. Oh, I didn't load the... Oh. I haven't loaded 3D, 3GL details on here yet because my version of this I had to do a lot of tweaking on to get it to work through my streaming setup which I will just mention if someone's interested in that um, generally speaking the video on these um, from these two HDMI ports will just work straight away out of the box into any modern monitor it will read the settings from the monitor and give you the right resolution now because I'm streaming from it and I'm pushing it out through a switch to enable me to share it amongst my other video inputs, my uh, cameras, etc. I had to use this uh, setting file called config.txt. Um, Basically there's a folder called boot on every one of these SD cards that once you've written it. And you have to manually edit that file if you want to do anything clever with the HDMI output. So what I wanted to do, if I scroll right down here, um, again, this is all available on the Raspberry site. I just wanted to be able to run it at a set rate, which was this setting here, 1080p, 25 hertz uh, on the refresh rate there. So that basically meant I needed to add a config into the um, text file. And it's relatively easy to do that as well. Basically, I needed to do that from the command line here. There's a folder called boot. You basically do your whole your old classic CD backslash boot. Now you can, if you're familiar with Linux, not everybody is, but some people are, you can use the VI command to edit this. But I use um, LeafPad, uh, which is this, a free notepad that comes with uh, this distribution. And then that word sudo at the front of that uh, section there, that means that it means I'm running this as a supervisor sort of level. It'll enable me to uh, edit. So you fire that up. It shows you your config text, which is what uh, the boot uh, system on this uh, Raspberry looks at when it's booting. And then you slap in um, the appropriate uh, details. One thing I had to do to get it to work with this fixed um, set up is I had to disable this overlay for this 3D overlay here. Um, I'm not 100% sure what it did, but I had to disable it to get it to work at that rate that I, I wanted. And the other thing I did is I set the um, I set the HDMI group in here. So yeah, this is a bit of dry information if you're not really into this kind of tech, but uh, basically it's got a setting number 33 for the configuration on the HDMI group. So I picked that, setting number 33, there it is, and that meant that when the uh, system were fired up, it was going to appear in this correct res resolution. Use VI is not, yeah, exactly, Scott. 
Oh, uh, I, I actually, when I first came on here, I started to use it again, and I had to remember the old commands, and uh, yeah, that was a nightmare. So yeah, I made those changes, rebooted, and it meant that um, my um, my screen resolution was suitable for the output that I've got on this uh, rig that I use to share my cameras and switch between various devices. I could only support that very specific um, 1080p, 25 hertz, anything else, and I won't get anything on the display uh, in terms of this desktop. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, so Scott just said VI, VI, it's basically a text editor, but it's been written for people with slightly different brains or at a certain age of brain that couldn't get their hand around it. Um, so if anybody's a, a Linux fan that's watching this, I am actually a qualified Linux system administrator, but that's circa 1999, no, it must have been 2000. About 2002, I did Linux system admin. Um, as part of my uh, training. Before that, I'd been a Novell system administrator, Windows, uh, like, what was it called? Microsoft MCSE. I did all of that back on version 4 of NT, and then I redid it for the whole Active Directory 2000 as well. So, yeah, I, I did. I have learned to use Vi um, in the past, um, but um, I now shun it because <laughs> it's quite tricky. Right, yeah, so... That was basically uh, a quick overview of the config file, which is in the, as I mentioned, the boot folder. Um, and you can edit that to change things like graphics settings if you're having any problems with what boots. But as I said before, if you just find this off with a normal, uh, normal screen that you've got connected to your PC and you just want to see what it looks like, it will just work straight out of the box once you've gone through those basic steps of basically essentially downloading your version of, where have I got again? Downloading Raspberry, I'd recommend the one where it has all the software on it, unless you wanted a really light build, um, which is this one, Raspberry and Buster with desktop and recommended stuff. Download that, then use Etcher on your desktop PC to write the image down onto the SD card before you put it into the machine and boot it. And then there you go, as soon as that's done, the whole thing will boot and you'll be away on a normal um, monitor. Um, so yeah, great little machine, and um, I say I'm using it here, switching between things like YouTube. I am a bit concerned now that maybe that I'm getting the sort of slight glitchiness on, uh, and the tearing, which you can see, I don't know if it's coming through, but there's a little bit of tearing that's happening on the screen there, on this video of mine on my channel on YouTube, and uh, that could be because I've had to change that setting, um, and it also could be this browser. But there's another aspect to Raspberry uh, Pis, which has been huge over the last few years. Stop that video. And that is um, RetroPi. So what is RetroPi? Well, RetroPi is another sort of distribution of, um, of an application, just like, I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. Yeah, just like I've said with the Raspbian, that's the Linux desktop that allows you to uh, use all the various applications and browsers, exactly what I'm running here at the moment on this desktop. Um, but it's, it boots straight in in RetroPy, finding it over here, RetroPy docs, there we go. It boots straight into an emulation screen. So um, you still use Etcher if you download it. You can use Etcher to burn your micro SD card and write the image to it. But it's going to boot into a emulation system and so it can run things like ROMs from arcade machines, it can run um, NES, SNES, PlayStation 1 and various other bits and pieces on there and there's a version for Raspberry Pi and there's a version for another uh, single board computer called um, Odroid. It will also run on a desktop too. I, I'm not going to show you exactly how it fires up, but um, obviously you need to get um, copies of the ROMs, which are kind of illegal to get hold of in terms of having licenses. You're meant to own the cartridge or the system to be able to use it. But you can see down here Neo Geo. MAME is the name of um, emulation of arcade machines, and you basically get a copy of whatever it is from Pac-Man to Asteroids and everything in between. Um, and yeah, it's very it's made very simply 
um, almost looks as professional when it's running. I don't think we've got one here where they're showing screens, but um, I may do that in another future update. If I talk about actually running RetroPie, because I haven't got it installed, so basically uh, the way I would do it is I would buy two of these um, small SanDisk SD micro cards. One of them I would run a copy of this RetroPie that we've got on the screen here, and the other one I'd use for, for desktop so that uh, and I could just switch those out. You can sort of blend them together, but really you need to boot to one or boot to the other, one for your desktop use with this Raspberry and Raspbian that's running on there, or to RetroPie if you wanted to um, fire up emulation. And if you were able to get hold of some ROMs, some of them are freely available. Um, you could then try out running various emulators. The other thing that it will do, and it's been sort of supported by the community as well, and, and there's been a lot of... Um, clever stuff coming out for this is that this company called 8-Bit Do um, as you can see it looks like a, a SNES gamepad doesn't it but basically it's a um, retro style gamepad very good quality I mean that's the other thing when I first looked into retro gaming which would have been 10 years ago obviously I was around for the retro games as well because I used to have a you know ZX81 then ZX Spectrum then Commodore 64, then Atari ST, then Amiga. I've been through the whole the whole range and the consoles, SNES, NES. But um, these sort of things used to be really rubbish. I mean, you'd go into your local game store or um, whatever kind of store that you're using, PC World, and you'd pick up a you know a copy clone version of a, uh, a console a controller, and they would just be pretty crappy. Um, but these are made. Uh, this company in particular, 8-Bit Do. They're all really solid bits of kit, and you could fit, you feel like you could throw it around, and it would last almost as long as the originals. And this one does charge up, I think, or is this one not battery? I can't remember. But one of them that they do is Wi-Fi, and the other one you could just put straight into your USB port on your Retro Pi, uh, or this a Raspberry Pi. But then you run Retro Pi on it, fire it up, and then you can all your favourite old arcade games or NES games or SNES games you can run on there. Um, if you can find copies of the ROMs uh, legally, you can then um, click away and it'll, it'll just recognise these. It's just, again, back in the dark ages of retro gaming, you know, 10 plus years ago, you'd, you'd fire up an emulator and you'd be playing around trying to get a Sony PlayStation controller to work on your desktop PC, whatever it is. Now you just plug one of these in and you're away. And they do various variations on these as well. And they also do some support, I think, of the uh, directly of things like the Sony PlayStation controllers, so you can plug them into the USB on the Raspberry and get going. So essentially, you've got all of your old classic games that you used to love um, and want to have a go of again, and you can run them on the Raspberry here and get the right controllers for them as well, made in a way that you feel like you could, you know, you could chew your dog could chew on it, and you'd have no problems still running it. So that was a slight distraction showing the 8-bit do controller, but it's a, it's a great bit of kit to use with this application RetroPie. Right, what else have I got to say? I think that was everything I was going to say, other than obviously at some point I need to do a video to show you um, the full workflow. But just showing you again freshness-wise, going onto some websites that have... Um, you know, loading screens. I don't know if they're using Flash or HTML5 on here, but you can see it feels fresh. Um, you're not you're not getting any issues with um, you know, loading of the page. You know, this is over Wi-Fi as well, um, but um, it feels as fresh as it would do running this on a on a normal PC to me. I'm gonna switch to another website here. Obviously, I'm in the UK. This is a USA sort of website, but who knows where it is in the cloud. But again, heavy images, and um, it's working great. So we go back to the photos in here. Go back up. Browse down. And it's all it's all good.
So if I just switch back out now, turn off this picture in picture, I could leave that on. That's me. Right, so that was it. Let me get hold of it again. So there it is, that's a Raspberry Pi. Um, this is the version four, so the latest version, this 2019 edition. And I'm using it for desktop, mostly for my streaming, so that I can show web pages when I'm in the middle of doing a video. So I'll do a bit of painting or something down here, and then I go, oh, I'll just switch to web page, show you that information. I'm using a Raspberry Pi to do that because it's just convenient, I'm not having to fire up another computer and um, kind of a little bit of interesting technical gubbins, but um, there are various ways to stream off your PC or Mac, and one of them is a company called uh, Telestream Wirecast, which is kind of a paid for version of software, and then there's another one called OBS, Open Broadcast Software, I think that is. And OBS is what I'm using, which is free software again to download and stream. But both of these softwares have a feature to share your desktop, so you don't, why, why would I need a Raspberry Pi? Because I could just share the desktop from there, but it is a bit fiddly, I find, um, to do that because you uh, I quite often find the window changes. It's not as clean an experience as I'd like. And with a Raspberry Pi like this, I can just switch to it on my uh, video switcher, which I will detail in another video, as I said, in terms of my workflow for streaming uh, hobby content. Uh, but switching to a Raspberry Pi, look, it's as quick as I can just go to my Raspberry and it's away. So I'm not having to, as I said, use things inside the open broadcast software to, to do that. I just feel sort of also safe in the knowledge that what I tend to do, coming back out, what I tend to do if I'm doing a video stream is um, have another, I've obviously got a browser up on my main PC, but I've got all sorts of things in there, like I've got the Facebook page, I've got YouTube, I've got my streaming consolidation pages, and again, that would get confused if I switched to that desktop inside my um, OBS uh, open broadcast software, because I'd then go, oh, I'm on my YouTube page, that's not what I want to show you, and you have to kind of switch around. So yeah, it's a great bit of kit. Great for the uh, retro gaming, which I will show in another video as well, because it's worth showing that up. In fact, not sure there's actually a distribution of the Retro Pi for the 4 edition of this um, uh, Raspberry 4 Pi, Raspberry Pi 4 even. I don't think Retro Pi have done a distribution for it, but you can still run that on the 3B and early editions. Um, but it will be coming soon, because they're so community driven, you find that um, you know, these things are rushed out and people find the bugs and report them and they uh, soon get streamlined and sorted out. And because you can use that, again, show you, because you can use the distributions, you just download them, put them on an SD card, burn them using this very, very simple application called Etcher that obviously you're etching your image onto the, uh, is what they're trying to use in terms of the wording there. And they stick that onto the SD, you stick it onto the SD card snap it in and you'd be away within 10 minutes um, it really is that quick now and if you then rushed out and bought as i showed you before one of these fantastic 8-bit do go back to me one of these fantastic 8-bit um, do controllers i mean there's probably other brands on the market um, and they also do the bluetooth versions as well as these wired ones and i can't even remember if this is a bluetooth one or not but it's uh, it's a really nice solid controller uh, pop that on and you'll be running your retro games as well. So it's quite a uh, interesting bit of kit and just fun if you're into computers and like me, you like these gadgets and you don't want to spend a lot of money on these things as well. They're not a great deal of uh, cost. You can get everything you need, probably even a tiny monitor to go with them as well, all for under $100 if you looked around. So, yeah. That's going to be this stream over, I think. I mean, all about the Raspberry Pi and what I've been doing with it so far, but I will provide more information as I uh, do more with it. So basically, once I've got that retro software on there, I will show it off again and also talk about how it fits into my workflow here with the cameras and everything that I've got uh, connected up. So thanks for listening in. So it's been totally not Wargaming related, although I did show some... Um, uh, gamer style uh, pages in the browsing that I was doing there but uh, I'll be back to doing more war game stuff soon but I decided you know I'll mix the channel up a bit and put other interests I've got on there you know I wasn't a quandary at first I thought what should I do have a whole new channel just for 
IT gadget stuff or do I just mix it together? I thought I'll just mix it together because I'm not I'm not aiming to become like an internet hero with this channel. I just want to put quality things up that people might want to watch and do things that I'm interested in. So that's why it's not been gaming this time, but uh, hopefully will be next time. So thanks for listening. I'm going to click my stop streaming button now.